join hands and dollars with the nonprofit Angel to Angel in helping the disenfranchised, elderly, youth, and mentally ill in living a sustainable life. You can help by donating to angel to angel help.org where your seed is planted in fertile ground. Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Good morning, toasters. Good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is in your region. I want to thank you for joining me. Thanking you for taking the time out of your day to spend with me, to listen to me for whatever reason. I want to thank you. I'm appreciative. I don't take it for granted. Today, I want to talk about living life to the fullest. And also want to highlight and recognize two ladies uh, who are a part of my next book, Palmer Christie. And that is Angela and Guinevere. Now, brothers, I truly believe we take life for granted. And I know you've heard it before throughout your life that tomorrow is not promised. And it's true. Tomorrow is not promised. I can't reiterate that or, or, or uh, highlight that enough. You know, we take for granted that, you know, I'm talking to you right now. And, you know, once this, this recording ends, you can find out that I pass or I could pass right now. Man, we really take that for granted. And we have to make a conscious choice. We have to be purposeful in getting the most out of us every day. And I really believe we fail to do that because not only do we take it for granted that we're going to wake up and we're going to live, you know, a long age unless, you know, we have a chronic ailment. We take it for granted that we're going to wake up, but we also suffer from laziness. We suffer from low self-esteem, insecurity, and um, mediocrity. We, we do. We, we settle for being average. And any resistance we come across when we're trying to be great, yeah, if we don't have that fortitude, that testicular fortitude, that fight in us, that dog in us, we'll give up. We quit. Uh, any rough days, we quit. Man, I got a lot going on. But... You know, I love it. You know, I love it. And um, it's easier as the days go on. But some days, you know, you got to fight to get up. You got to fight to pursue your mission, to pursue your purpose. That's life. You know, so now some guys are naturally high energy and go, go, go. But most of us are not like that. So we got to consciously be in pursuit of greatness and uh, uh, consciously know that, hey, I got to get off my butt. I got to do this. We got to be on the schedule. And so, you know, I get it. I get it. But I'm telling you, man, you do not want to be in a nursing home or on your deathbed with regrets. You know, I once knew a person that worked in a nursing home, and she told me, man, the biggest regret and the biggest complaint from uh, the people in the nursing home uh, that reside there uh, is their regrets over life when they reflect and they look back on their lives they have a lot of regrets of what they should have done what they could have done and, and would have done you know if they had another opportunity you don't want to be in that position you, you really don't um pursue your goals every day be conscious of this be purposeful be intentional because we can get caught up in laziness and, and being average and just uh, going with the flow, you know, being comfortable. And that's not a safe place to be, man. You, you really want, uh, we think it's safe, but it's really not. You want to have that energy constantly moving forward, constantly circulating and growing. And you want to be around people that do that for you, that have their energy circulating, man, so you can push each other and motivate each other and influence one another. Now, I want to highlight these two ladies, uh, Guinevere and Angela, because... I mean, I think the way we came across one another is unique, you know, and there's a backstory uh, to their relationship. Now, uh, I don't know if I mentioned before on YouTube, but Guinevere, she passed, uh, she moved on two years ago, no, actually, yeah, a little over two years ago, December of 2019, yeah, December of 2019, uh, maybe a, a couple of months after I documented and interviewed her. Got a chance to sit with her. She she passed December 2019 uh, from from cancer. Years of battling cancer. It had taken 
over the majority of her body and uh, she suffered a lot towards the end uh, even when you know I went to uh, document her Yaya and I went to document her and interview her she was in the back room in the uh, bathroom her mom came out and said she's changing her bandages and that uh, she told us she didn't have long she told us her daughter did not have long and hey uh, two months after that she did pass uh, I went to the funeral and uh, Man, beautiful lady inside and out. Now, Angela passed. Uh, another one of the 13 women I interviewed and documented. Uh, she passed December 2021. Yes, last month. And I was, I, I thought about this, you know, about an hour ago. I was like, man, they, man, they passed two years apart in the same month. Like, like you can't make this up. Who would who would have thought this? Um, two years apart, yeah, same month, and so uh, and they're both part of the book. Uh, the way I came across these two ladies, you know, Guinevere was brought to my attention. Although I knew Guinevere from school, and I knew Angela from school. Actually, Angela grew up two blocks from me, and uh, I knew both of them from school. Uh, a classmate told me uh, that I need to speak to Guinevere. After this classmate had seen the, the post of the book, of the new book, and the still pics of me interviewing different women and, and me letting people know that this is a, a real-life fiction three-book series. I'm telling their real-life stories in a real-life fiction um, format. And so she reached out to me, this classmate, and said, you really need to talk to our, our uh, classmate, Guinevere. I spoke to Guinevere, you know, found out she was... Uh, experiencing, you know, uh, battles with cancer, taking off most of her body, and uh, just a little bit of everything about her, her life, and so I went in and interviewed her, scheduled a meeting, interviewed her, and man, it was it was dynamic, it was powerful, and I'm glad I was obedient, you know, to my spirit, to my higher voice, I'm glad I took that call from the classmate, uh, I actually reached out to Angela, I saw uh, on Facebook, she was going through treatments with, uh, stem cell replacement or therapy. She was suffering from ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, where uh, it affects the muscles and the nervous system. Uh, so I saw her trips, her rehabilitation process and her trips to uh, Houston and LA. And so I reached out to her and said, Man, I'd like to speak to you and just hear how we got to this point. And, but I wanna cover your whole life. And uh, we set that up and that was a beautiful meeting. That was beautiful. And even though she needed a walker, to get around, man, she wasn't lazy. She she was she was active. She took us around her house. We toured her house. She told showed us her designs she had uh, from the past and, and in the making. And so she was active. Uh, she was really active. Uh, but I enjoyed my time with both of these ladies. So yes, Guinevere passed December 2019. Angela passed uh, December 2021. Uh, but. I want to say, man, these ladies lived their lives to the fullest. Uh, they did a lot throughout their life. They did a lot, and, and you'll read about that, but they did a lot. And, man, I, I didn't realize uh, how much it really affected me because I had gotten close to these women, man, all 13 women I had gotten close to. I had taken on uh, some energy uh, from these women while sitting and talking to them and hearing these stories. At some point, I had to uh, actually... Uh, meditate and purge and uh, cut myself off before I started the next interview because there was so much energy coming towards me. Man, I'm like a sponge for that. Uh, but it was powerful. I needed them and, and I believe they needed me and the universe just brought us together. Uh, but I didn't realize how much it affected me until a week ago. Um, you know, last week or a week prior, Thursday, that Thursday, I went to uh, Angela's wake. Uh, that Friday, I went to the funeral. And uh, it was powerful, man. It was moving. It just had me reflecting over her life and, and different things. And me sitting with her, me reflecting on a time with her. And then that Sunday, I was uh, I was a scientist to, uh, I guess, host to be the lead speaker in uh, the power circle session so we have it every sunday at 8 p.m 
you know, so I was supposed to lead the session. And uh, that morning, you know, I studied that night, and that morning I got up and studied, and then I went to the cigar shop to just digress, and, uh, you know, just smoke me a couple of cigars, I uh, watched the game, I'm looking at the game, the Cowboys play at the cigar spot, but my mind is on these ladies, especially Angela, who had just passed. I just went to her funeral a day ago. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, I'm reflecting, and I'm getting emotional. And uh, I even text, you know, Yaya, I said, man, I'm getting really emotional, uh, you know, just reflecting. And also, you know, thinking back, I was experiencing a move, and that's not a big deal to some, but, you know, uh, I'm a person that likes stability in my habitat. I'm really a homebody. So moving me around, I'm not used to. And so that affected me. Uh, a lot going on. And so I'm thinking about these two ladies. And then I got the move going on. And uh, I reached out to the creator and founder of the per, uh, Power Circle. My brother, Soul Immortal. Yeah, check out his channel. But I reached out to him through text. Just to give him a heads up. Uh, that I'm feeling emotional. And I've never talked to a man like this, man. Never in my life talked to a man like this. But I think I owed him that because that is his platform. That is his baby. Uh, although, you know, he's assigned me to lead that session. Uh, I think he deserved that. You know, I owed him that. Just in case, man, I had an emotional breakdown or something. I started crying or whatever. Or I got off topic. That he wouldn't be shocked and be like, man, what is going on with, with SD? So I had to give him that heads up out of respect. And and, and and not just out of respect for that, for his platform, respect as a man. Because like I said, I've never uh, told a man that ever, that I'm feeling emotional. Um, maybe I've only told uh, Yaya that twice or three times maybe. Um, but I've never told a man that. And so uh, that night comes with the power circle. And hey man, um, I was emotional from the get-go. And I think... I would have been okay. Me and Soul got to talk about this. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But he alluded to, he mentioned that I, you know, communicated with him earlier that I was kind of going through something. And that just opened up the floodgates, man. And so, I've never cried in front of men. Uh, uh, man, that's probably my second time ever in life to cry in front of men. And so that was different. But, you know, I needed that, man. And I wasn't going to run from the assignment of speaking or leading the brothers that night because I, I felt like I needed it. Uh, but I wanted to be a man of my word, too. And you got to fight through adversity. Like, no matter what you're going through, you got to fight. Uh, it wasn't a life or death situation for me. So I had to show up, you know. But it's people that have shown up after deaths and family that have shown up and led. Uh, so I had no excuse. I had to fight through it. Uh, but that alludes to, well, that that that, that sets way into brothers. I had to fight through that. I had to fight through that insecurity. Because, brothers, I did not want to uh, break down and cry in front of these men. Trust me, I didn't. But I had to fight through that, and I needed that. And whatever you got to fight through to pursue your mission, your pur purpose, man, you got to do that. And you got to get around some brothers that can help you. Uh, that can push you forward, you can push them forward, that you can lean on, you got to do that, whatever it takes. The main thing, man, you got to shut down that inner voice in you. You know, a lot of times we like to say we got haters or we got people that are talking down on us that don't want us to be great, don't want us to win. But the biggest voice is ours. You have the biggest voice, man. So whatever it is, uh, you got to do. You got to do that, man. But uh, get around the right circle of men. To make sure you can live life to the fullest, brothers. I know brothers and sisters listening. Sometimes I forget about the sisters I listen to. I know we got different insecurities. All of us, man. All of us got something that, uh, you know, we got, we got a chapter or a page in the book of our life that we don't like to read out loud. Right? So you take me for instance, man. I got gaps. You know, I've had gaps since I was a kid. Um. Uh, I'm probably going to get veneers, you know, but it's not something that was a big insecurity of mine. But as I get older, I know it's not good to have gaps, you know, just from a health reason. Right. But um, since I was a kid, man, asked my mom for braces. She said I didn't need braces because my teeth are straight. 
they're white. You know, I got a, I got a nice smile. And I agree. I, I think I got a nice smile. My teeth are white. And, and for the most part, they are straight. <laughs> but as I get older, you know, I need braces, man. They, they're shifting. So I, well, I don't need braces. I need veneers. I think. I'm too old for braces, I think. But I might get that, man. But that's that's something, uh, not a huge insecurity, but something I was aware of that I wanted to fix. I also didn't like my name growing up. You know, Stacy isn't uh, the name you would choose for yourself growing up in the hood, man, or not even just growing up in the hood. I don't think a guy would choose the name Stacy for himself. So I used to introduce myself as Book uh, until I hit around 23, you know, and, and a lot of people knew me as Book or, you know, I had an older brother, so they would call me Lil Book, some people, his, his older friends. But I didn't like that. But um, I'm telling you, man, one night after uh, me and my boy was out clubbing, and one night, uh, we're in the parking lot. You know how you do after the club. We're in the parking lot. We met these two young ladies. We're chopping it up. And I introduced myself as Book. And she's like, I know your mom didn't name you that. So I told her my, my real name. And uh, she went crazy. She thought that was the hottest, sexiest thing. And then she's like, girl, he got gaps too. She thought that was the hottest, sexiest thing. Man, that gave me a whole new perspective. You know, and I never was highly insecure about either one. Probably more so my name uh, than the gals. Because, like I said, I got straight teeth. I got white teeth. Now, if they went, went white in it, you know, they were they went straight, maybe I would feel differently. So I wasn't highly uh, insecure about the, my, my gaps. But uh, those are two things, man, that you got to fight through. Like, and I have fought through. I've never been afraid to speak. I've never been afraid to smile. Uh I just fight through, and, and that's what you got to do, man. Everybody got something, man. You might got big ears, a uh, weird-shaped head, you think, weird eyes. You might stutter. You may not have the IQ you want. Uh, you may not like your height. You may not like. You may not like your weight. Whatever that is, man, you got to fight through and persevere because we all got something, all of us, man. Uh, my, my guy Jer Jeremiah from the Bible, you know, he was a stutterer. He stuttered. You know, God said, I got you. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, when it's time to speak, you, you'll be okay. Uh, Abraham, we can call Abraham a coward. You know, he told Sarah, hey, tell, tell him you're my sister. Don't tell him you're my wife. Tell him you're my sister, man. They might kill me. You know, and the king found out, you know, why all this bad stuff was happening. He went, it's like, man, what's going on? You know, because I took up this woman. Uh you know, what's, what's going on? And, and, you know, Abraham had to confess. And, yeah, that's really my, my, my wife, but I was scared you might kill me because you wanted her. Come on, man. That's a coward act. You know, David. David was weak behind the women, man. Killed him, man. Got a man set up from high. So everybody got something, man. Everybody got something. Moses had his thing. Everybody got something. Paul said he has a thorn in his side, whatever that was. So everybody has something to keep us humble, to let us know, hey, man, you ain't perfect, and to keep us humble. But the thing is, man, you got to fight through it. And that's the only way you're going to live life to the fullest, if you persevere. Man, you got to have some dog in you. You got to have some fight in you. You can't be worried about the outsiders, what they say. Uh, you can't be worried about that own voice inside of you that's speaking negativity, man, because that's the biggest voice. You got to fight through and persevere. And I think that's what these ladies did to the end, brothers. Guinevere and Angela fought to the end. They were creating to the end. Uh, and I think they live life to the fullest, man. No one really knows but them, you know. But I know for a fact, you know, uh, Guinevere was in extreme pain and, and, and uh, medicated. But I know Angela, man, she was smiling uh, throughout the process and she fought. And uh, that was a shock because she fought so hard and had a great spirit and, and a positive spirit. That really shocked me uh, when she passed because I didn't, I know, I knew what she was undergoing, what she was experiencing, but because of her energy, I just, I guess, I assume she would live for a long time. Uh, but that's taking things for granted, right? Uh, but that's how positive she was, man. So I'm definitely going to represent properly for those two women uh, and the other 11 women 
13 women in all, and uh, I definitely do them justice. But brothers, sisters, live life to the fullest. Get off your butt. Quiet that, that negative voice inside of you and push forward, whatever it is. You got something that you feel a certain way about, fix it. If you can't fix it, push forward. And that's going to make you even stronger. And then when you get in position to fix it, you may say, I'm, I don't even want to fix it now. Or you might go ahead and fix it, whatever. But persevere, push forward, have no regrets. Have that dog, get that dog out of you, man. Come on. As always, from me to you, love.